Hey there, this is Marissa with Marissa Moments Podcast, Healing While I Heal, where I share my real life stories and their healing translations. So let's just get straight into it. (laughs) Spirit actually brought into my awareness um, a reminder of all of the interactions that I've had with animals. Um, Not necessarily all of them because there had really been a lot, but just some of them. And it's been like a highlight reel playing through my third eye that really makes me laugh kind of because... You know, I always refer to myself as a twisted Snow White. And it's basically because as long as I can remember within my entire existence in this lifeline, um, animals have always been drawn to me. But the ironic thing is that I've never been drawn to animals. So it's always been like, oh my God, what is that? Why? Just why, Lord? Right? So let me actually give you some illustrations of these situations because it's easy for me to be like, yeah, animals are drawn to me and just leave it at that. But no, let's talk real life stories, right? Because that's what you're here for. Um, For example, uh, there was a bat on one of my balconies hissed directly in my face. Now, of course, I leaned over to investigate because all I saw was fur, didn't know what it was. So I was face to face with this bat and it hissed. I mean, it hissed. <laughs> so that's one situation. I've had oh, a possum. Let's be, let's stay on the hissing situation, right? I had a possum that was in a trash can. And as soon as I went to open it, he basically greeted me nose to nose and hissed directly in my face. Now these two situations specifically, yeah, they were damaging because I was freaked the F out. Like I was like, oh my God, how am I going to sleep? How am I going to get over it? It took me probably about a month. No, not that long. <laughs> That's not the truth. I have to always be honest, right? So I can, it's hard for me to even over-exaggerate at this point. But it took me about at least a good week, maybe two weeks before I could even go to the trash can without having flashbacks or feeling like, oh my God, it's going to be there, right? So anyway, um, I've also had birds like fly almost into my forehead and to the point where I had to duck. And um, (laughs) at the time I was called out like, oh my God, why are you being so extra? But of course, you know how you have that conversation Um, about the situation and circumstance after the fact and they're like yeah that bird totally was gunning for you and I'm like I knew it you know one of those situations Um, I've had chipmunks chase me I was at a zoo so uh I mean there was other people around and I was the only one that had chased so I was like cool um I also actually had a zoo I guess a lot of things happened at the zoo I had um birds fly at me I had, I think it was an alpaca where we essentially had a whole conversation where it was staring at me through the gate for so long and then kind of following me around. So I had, I just kind of turned it around and had a conversation with them about how, how life is behind bars, right? Um, let's see, what else, what else, what else? Of course, now I'm drawing a blank. <laughs> oh, there was um, a, a dog. Okay, this is actually a good one when it comes to spirit, right? So it was winter time. I'll never forget snow on the ground, fresh snow. And this dog came chasing after me. So I ran up on the uh, porch of where I was staying at the time. And I had this habit, you guys, of like, when I'm scared, I laugh. And when I'm in pain, I laugh. Like that is just what I do so and it's kind of like a Peter Griffin laugh because it's really uncomfortable and awkward so I was kind of like doing this shuffle trying to get the door open and at the same time I was like (laughs) kind of like that right so anyway and then of course when the door was open nobody saw the dog the dog was gone were there footprints in the snow yes but only halfway through the yard it was a really suspicious slash interesting moment I think it might have been a ghost dog might have been one of my uh, real life moments and interactions with mediumship, right? Because I have been visited by ghost dogs too, but that's a whole different video, download, whatever. So let's stay on dogs, right? I've had a <laughs> a chihuahua chase me. Have you ever been chased by a chihuahua? Yes, they're small, but they bark a whole lot. Well, should I say they yap a whole lot? And it can be quite intimidating, especially when it's chasing you down a hallway. And when somebody's using you as a personal body shield, right? Now, I just kind of skated over that. But let's go into that personal body shield because there is one specific moment that spirit brought back into my recollection 
when, um, okay, so you guys, <laughs> if you grew up in an urban atmosphere, right, where there were loose, uh, for lack of better phrasing, let me see, uh, typically miss, I want to say diagnosed, but I don't know the right word to say here, but misdiagnosed, we'll say that as being aggressive breeds, right? Now, of course, we know that animals are only as aggressive as they're raised up to be, as their environment, you know, kind of dictates, right? Kind of same thing with people, right? If you are in a rough and tough environment, then odds are good you're going to be rough and tough too. If you're not treated with love and kindness, then you're not going to treat others with love and kindness, right? But anyway, so in this situation and circumstance, it was actually a Rottweiler. I will never forget. I mean, I don't think about it often, but spirit made me think about it, right? So this Rottweiler starts chasing me and this other person. And at one point, I was, again, grabbed and used as a human shield between that other person and the dog. Now, I can recall I was scared out of my mind, but I knew in my every time I had a situation with the dog, what played over and over was show no fear show no fear. So in those moments, every single time, and I was young, you guys, I might've been like 10 or something like that. It wasn't like I was very old, maybe eight. I have no idea. But anyway, what I can recall that I did was I stuffed every bit of fear down in my gut and I pulled up every possible bit of confidence I could. <clears throat> Pardon me. And then I stomped my foot on the ground as hard as I possibly could. I started gearing towards it like I was about to charge the dog. And I told him to get out of here with the strongest, sternest voice I possibly could muster. I mean, maybe that's why my voice is kind of deep at this point. Who knows, right? But the end of that story was happy because it actually did leave us alone. Now, mind you, every single time a dog or animal or bat or <laughs> possum or rat oh my god there was another story of a rat where it was coming <laughs> towards me as I opened a door obviously I didn't know it was there so when I opened the door I screamed bloody murder and it did the rat equivalent of screaming bloody murder too because you want to know what happens next it fell down a flight of stairs I scared the bejesus out of it right have you ever seen a rat fall down a flight of scare stairs out of fear <laughs> it actually feared me. Now, I'm not saying that because it's funny or anything like that. I know I chuckle beat, but again, I tend to have the opposite response of what most people would typically have. So when I'm in pain, I laugh. When I'm scared, I laugh. And uh, when I'm sad, <laughs> I don't do anything, right? But anyway, that's not the point of this. Healing translation is pretty clear on this. One... All, I, what I realized is that these trans, these interactions with all of these animals was just a sign of my divinity and my higher connection with source. It was just a, a, a walking, living, breathing example of me being a hypersensitive being. Now, you know how they say like babies and animals are always drawn to like people who have like greater vibrations or elevations or any of those types of things, energy, light, however you want to look at it, right? Well, by golly. I must be glowing like a freaking, I don't know, like the sun, because I'm always, they are always drawn to me, whether it be little kids, whether it be animals, any of those things, birds, you name it. And they always come to me. And that's not limited to actual animals. It can be insects too. It can be fish in an aquarium. It can be any of those things. And what I realize and what spirit has pointed out is that they are all drawn to me. When I really think about it, they've always come to me, which is, is I, I probably sound to you right now, I am mind blown because I never really think about these things. Anyway, anyway, the bottom line to this bottom line is <clears throat> we got to be able to translate these experiences into turning our pain into purpose, if, essentially, right? So I might have been afraid, but you know what happened in those moments? It taught me how to not be afraid. It taught me how to stand in my power when it came to being in the face of my fear. So now if I come across an animal, will I be afraid? Yes, I'll still have that twinge of fear, but will I back down? No, I know how to handle myself. And it's not saying that I'm going to get into the aggressive state where I'm going to be the uh, aggressor. <laughs> 
little, little uh, wordsmith over here. But it is saying that everything literally happens for a reason. We just have to be able to get outside of our head and stop being in the victim seat enough and long enough to be like, oh, that's why that happened. That's why, that's what taught me how to no longer be afraid. That's what taught me and made me realize that I am a hypersensitive being. That's what made me kind of recognize my connection, greater connection with source and even animals and nature, right? But I know I'm rambling as usual. So if this message resonates, then that means it's for you. And if not, that's cool too. Just keep it pushing. Either way, I thank you for listening and I wish you the best, best day ever. Until next time, you know the vibes. Peace. Oh, and by the way, don't forget to check me out on all of social media. I'm basically everywhere you probably shouldn't be. So when you see me, don't forget to like, comment, share, all of those good things. But when you look me up, don't forget it is Marissa Moments. And that is Marissa with one S because there is only one me. So until next time, happy healing.